Hello and welcome to this edition of Hack Naked TV. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and today we're going to talk about uh, a number of vulnerabilities and breaches that occurred over the last couple weeks. We'll talk a little bit about extortion, and I'm going to demo a tool that will prob probably make you ask yourself the question, do I allow ping out of my environment? As always, Hack Naked TV is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security. If you're in the need of a penetration test, vulnerability assessment, or any other type of security assessment for that matter, contact Black Hills Information Security. Send an email over to consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com. All right, some vulnerabilities and breaches that have occurred over the last couple weeks. Uh, CareFirst is a health healthcare organization that um, was victim to a 1.1 million customer record breach. Uh, this particular breach did not involve uh, social security numbers or credit card numbers, but it did involve name, address, dates of birth, um, and uh, that's 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 just yet another major healthcare organization that had a breach occur. Uh, 1.1 million customers. Charter Communications. Um, <clears throat> came out with the details about a vulnerability in their own web application that allowed for the enumeration of, of accounts. Um, it, it leaked customer data. Uh, this particular vulnerability was interesting. Um, apparently, Charter associates customers via their, their IP address. So if, if you were an attacker and you were able to send a, um, or modify a header of, of, a, of a connection to their, their web application, specifically the X44 header, which is not hard to modify by any means, um, to, to include or to, to reflect the IP address of one of their customers. Um, Charter would then provide you a page that is catered towards that customer. So if you were to then go try to change your username, um, the, the username page actually reflects the, uh, the, the customer name as well as their home address. Odd. Venom. Venom is a, a very widespread public or wide widely publicized uh, vulnerability that was discovered in virtualization software um, and that, that would essentially allow an, an attacker, a local attacker, to a virtual machine to escape that virtual machine to the, to the hypervisor level, which has been a major concern with a lot of like cloud service providers, you know, given the fact that they, they typically uh, share um, resources across multiple different customer systems. Um, so potentially, you know, ga gaining access to the hypervisor or the higher, higher virtualization engine. Um, would, would allow an attacker to gain access to other, other potential customers of that cloud service. Uh, Logjam was a vulnerability in Diffie-Hellman uh, key exchange that was uh, reported last week that uh, would allow for downgrade and TLS connections. Yet another man in the middle attack against, against TLS. Um, that's that's going to be a vulnerability in you know, many, many web servers, email servers, um, browsers as well. Everyone's trying to, to fix it. Uh, NetUSB was a, a remotely exploitable uh, kernel software that, uh, that basically allowed for, it's a, it's a buffer overflow, that um, it, it's in millions of routers. So things like Netgear, D-Link, TP-Link, all vulnerable to uh, remote code ex execution, um, which allows a remote attacker to completely compromise the device. Um, I, I should mention that all, all these articles I've got um, linked in the, the, the notes below, so I just didn't have room on the slide. All right, vendor extortion. So, I, re I was reading an article um, about this uh, this particular security vendor that goes and tries to find uh, particular customer data or uh, information that that is publicly available and and tries to associate that with 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 an organization. So they they, they would go to like peer to peer networks, find that you know somebody some employee at that that company had posted or had had accidentally uploaded you know some some customer data. This particular um, case was a, a, a breach of about 9,000 customers. They reported it to the company. They say, hey, um, here, here's here organization. Here's like 9,000 customer details that we found on the internet publicly available. Um, oh yeah, and by the way, if, if you want us to help fix that or if you want us to, um, you know, help find you, help, help you find more, um, here's, here's our prices. So, I'm, I mean, I don't, I'm not going to debate about whether or not that's, that's ethical or not. The, the next thing that happened was kind of what's, what's more interesting. Um, so the, the company de declined the offer for, for um, help with the services, and immediately the security vendor reported them to the FTC, which I'm not going to debate about that either, whether or not that was the right thing or not to do immediately. Um, but it, I don't know, it's, it's one of these like vulnerability disclosure type of deba debates. So from, from the, the security vendor's perspective, they're, they're trying to help the customers of the company out by reporting them to the FTC, but you know, that's going to be like an eight-year legal battle and probably going to completely ruin the company, um, whereas the, the company itself is, is worried you know, that you know, if, if I allow, if I allow you know, attackers to just try to find vulnerabilities in my software all the time, um, you know, what, what, if, what if I don't detect them um, you know, when they try to, try to attack my, my systems and they're trying to you know, quote-unquote 
legally or ethically find vulnerabilities. They're really just doing it maliciously. Um, so, I mean, it's just, it's an interesting story. If you want to read it, it's uh, the htv-xtort link below. Uh, all right, so let me ask you a question. Do you allow ping out of your environment? Go ahead, go like pinggoogle.com, and uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay, so you do you do allow ping out, okay. Uh, well, imagine a, an attacker who uses ping as a command and control channel. Pretty awesome, right? Or, or not, terrifying. Um, Lab of a Penetration Tester, awesome blog. If you haven't read it, go check it out. Uh, did, did an entire week of, of uh, PowerShell shells. So they did things like TCP, UDP shells, all using PowerShell. Um, you know, HTTP, HTTPS, DNS, like reminiscent of like DNS cat type, type of a uh, command control channel. But this particular one, uh, invoke-powershell ICMP is a command and control channel over ICMP echo requests and replies. Um, which I thought was awesome, so I thought it'd be cool to demo it for you guys. Um, <clears throat> what you'll need is the uh, the ICMP SH uh, Python script, which is, which is going to be our listener, which is linked below, and also the invoke PowerShell ICMP uh, PowerShell script, which is also linked below. All right. So the first thing we're going to want to do on our uh, command and control server is disable uh, or, or ignore ping requests to the system itself. And if, the reason you do this is, is, is if you don't, um, the the attacking system will be able to communicate to the server itself, but or I'm sorry, not the attacking the, the victim will be able to communicate to the server, but the victim will not re receive replies from the server if you do, don't do this step. All right, and then we're going to set up our listener, which um, essentially is just Python, um, and then run, running the 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 ICMP SH uh, underscore m Python script, with the first parameter being our this is going to be our attacking IP. This is our, our command and control server's IP. And then our victim is going to be this IP here. So let's go over to our victim host. I'm going to run a packet capture while we do this so that you can kind of see what's going on from an ICMP perspective. Okay, let's go ahead and filter an ICMP as well. So um, from, our, from our victim host, we're going to run PowerShell. We're going to um, import. We're going to import the, uh, the the invoke PowerShell ICMP PowerShell script. Thank you, Lab of a Penetration Tester. And we're going to then run the uh, the invoke PowerShell ICMP uh, script or the the module itself with a parameter of a uh, IP address, which is literally just just pointing to our attacking host. So run that. See some ICMP packets fly by. Come back over to our uh, command control server. We have a session. So let's go ahead and just run a couple commands to show you it's it's working. But essentially, this is this is a com command and control channel over ICMP. Pretty awesome. Now, if we we flip back over here, take a look at our packet capture. You can see in the uh, the hex down below, you can see some of the, the actual clear text data that's flying by because it's not encoded by any means. Um, but still, I mean, as 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 a defender, this is going to be something you're probably going to want to look at blocking. As a pen tester, uh, you, you're probably thinking like that's pretty pretty cool, you know, a, a freaking command and control channel over ICMP. All right, so that is it for this edition of Hack Naked TV. If you want to watch more Hack Naked TV, check out HackNaked.tv. Uh, check out Security Weekly at blip.tv slash Security Weekly. Um, the show notes for that uh, that show is at securityweekly.com/wiki. Uh, check out Source Boston, uh, May 25th through 28th, and you can use this uh, this promo code HTV2015GA to get $100 off your admission. Uh, I will be speaking at the HTCIA conference on command and control testing, data exfil, uh, which will probably include that that ICMP script actually. Um, and you can use uh, the the promo code HackNaked all uppercase no spaces to get 15% off of that conference. If you want to contact me, my email address is info.com and I'm on Twitter at DAFTAC. Have a great weekend. Thanks. Bye.